Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing you another foundation review and this is actually on a foundation that I did a first impression of ages ago, like probably nearly a year and a half ago. It is the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation and the reason I'm bringing you a full review today is because they've released a new shade. The shade that I've had for quite some time, obviously well over a year, is the shade Blanc, which is an extremely fair shade as you can see. I wasn't as in love with the formula back then, so I never really reached for it and the color as well was like just borderline, maybe too pale. I felt like it looked okay when I did quite like a full face of makeup or particularly a vintage look because I feel like the really, really snow white fair skin looks amazing with that kind of more vintage makeup look. But I always, always wish there was a shade between Blanc and Alabaster, which was the previous second lightest shade. So they've since come out with the shade Cream, which I was very excited. They've expanded from 26 shades to 32 shades. And so Cream is described as very fair with cool undertones, whereas Blanc is described as fairest with cool undertones. I kindly got sent this new shade from Mecca from the PR team, so thank you very much Mecca for sending that over so I could try it out. And I've had quite a change of heart with this foundation, I think because my skin's changed quite a lot, especially since using my Drunk Elephant skincare the last sort of year, I feel like my skin's really normalized out, it's not as oily as it used to be. And I think I have a better understanding as well of like primers and just like how to make a foundation work. So I think all those elements combined as well as the fact that I feel like I have a shade that looks really nice on like a sort of day to day basis with like very minimal sort of makeup. All of that combined has meant that I really like this now. So I wanted to do a full review for you just so you could get all the details, could see, you know, just like my normal process. <laughs> so that was a big intro. So this is called officially the Hourglass Vanish Seamless Finish Foundation Stick. Big name. I just call it the Vanish Stick Foundation. And it retails for $67 here in Australia and $46 in the US. Now, probably the only thing I don't like about this foundation is the price because you get only seven grams of product, which is nothing. This is a pretty new tube. Like I've only, you know, used a small amount of it recently. And you can see like that's what you're getting for uh, that price. I really do like the packaging on it. I quite like the sort of unique triangular shape and I love, it feels very quality. Like as you twist it, it locks into place for each turn, which I think is really nice. This product doesn't have an SPF, which is great. I'm really, really happy about that because I don't really love SPF in makeup. In fact, I really wish they didn't have it because I'm quite happy to put on a separate one that I know is like a good quality SPF um, and it means that you can wear it to events and stuff when you don't want to wear any sunscreen. So I love the fact that this doesn't have an SPF. It also doesn't have fragrance, yay! There's actually a lot of things in here that it doesn't have. There's a full list on the website of all of the things it doesn't have, like your typical things like parabens and all the, the nasties. So it's a moderately clean foundation in that sense. Now the texture of this one, it is very slippy for a foundation stick and that is because it's got a lot of silicones so that I mean silicones are sometimes a negative thing for skin as well so if you are someone that wants to avoid silicones I avoid it in my skincare but then it's in every it's in nearly every makeup product I have so it's something I'm struggling to avoid but a stick foundation is usually primarily silicones whereas liquids obviously have more of a water concentration so it does contain some oils as well and waxes so this is not an oil free stick foundation just be aware of that and it does have talc as well just in case that's something that you are not keen on. Now the coverage on this it's marketed as a full coverage foundation and I do agree with that I think you can build it up to get a full coverage however the way they market it as being like just a few dots and it'll give you full coverage I think is just a load of bull. I think you need to use quite a few swipes which is why the amount of product you get I think is disappointing because I think they underestimate how much you actually need to get a full face of makeup. The finish on this one is the part that I love. This gives a very natural satin matte finish to the skin. It just looks and imitates like really beautiful normal skin do you know what I mean like so it's not too glossy and shiny and oily looking but it certainly isn't flat and matte and I feel like in general I've heard more people with dry to normal skin enjoying this foundation than those with oily skin and I can understand that with my own experience because when my skin was a bit oilier I didn't love it as much so even though it's sort of a natural satiny matte finish it's not like super glow or anything it seems to work very well for people with dry skin then we come to the longevity and for me this is a very long wearing foundation as long as you prep it right 
And by that I mean that you should use a silicon based primer. This is such a silicon heavy product that if you just go in on top of your moisturizer or a beauty oil or something in the morning, um, you'll find that it just breaks down over the day. In the last sort of like month I've been trying it regularly because I got the new shade and I tried it without a primer and that was the day where I noticed it started to look a little bit more cakey and it didn't sit and stay beautiful all day. Um, when I tried it with a silicon based primer it held up really well. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in the demo. Um, but yeah, definitely need to use a primer with it and I find that it does have good longevity without a powder as long as you're not touching your face. So I would suggest powdering kind of like your jawline or wherever you tend to touch your face. For me it is the jawline because I'll rest my hands on there or my violin chin rest rubs off foundation here. And I went to uni this morning to do a recording for like an hour and you know it didn't really rub off so it's good because I'm actually filming this a bit later in the day. So powdering it will ensure it doesn't transfer but I think it's essential to prime with this to get the actual longevity. And of course because this one is hourglass this is cruelty free so I know I haven't put up a review on a cruelty free foundation for quite some time so I thought it was really good to do that for you guys that are exclusively cruelty free. So now I'm going to go into a bit more detail about the shades. As I said earlier they started with 26 shades which at the time of the launch was a pretty good shade range. I feel like in the last 12 months we've really now come to expect at least 30. Um, in the range of 30 to 40 shades is like kind of what we deem as the minimum of acceptance. Um, however I do still feel like there might be room to add more undertones. They certainly go from the very fairest up to the very deep because I've seen Nima Tang has done a review on it and the colour in terms of its depth, I think she used the shade Espresso, it's definitely the darkest shade she used. And she said she loved the way, you know, the depth of it, it worked with her complexion but the undertone wasn't quite right and there weren't enough varieties at that end to cater for her undertone and I would say it's the same for the other end of the spectrum as well. It's great that they've added in a, a shade in between Blanc and Alabaster. There was very much a gap there. However, their three lighter shades are all cool. So Blanc's cool, Cream is cool, Alabaster is cool and then Porcelain I think is neutral. Um, I think it is quite neutral warm like it leans a bit more yellow. But that one is certainly a good shade if not a shade and a half sort of deeper than my, my complexion. So anyone who's my sort of fairness but with a neutral or warm undertone is not going to be able to wear this. So that's why I think 32 shades is good. They could bump it up another level and add some extra undertones in the deep and very fair ends of the spectrum. So now we're going to get into the demo where I'll cover the primers I like to use with it, um, the tool I like to use to apply it. I'll show you how I apply it because I use both colours actually in my look. There will also be of course some swatches compared to a few of my other favourite foundations and ones that I've reviewed recently as well as a 12 hour wear test. So here we have the foundation swatch next to a few other ones in my collection. This is the Hourglass in Cream and this is the Hourglass in Blanc. This is the Illamasqua Skin Base in O2. This is MAC Studio Fix Fluid in NC10. This is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Nude Foundation in 1N0 Porcelain. And this is the Lasting Finish 25 Hour Breathable Foundation by Rimmel in the shade 001 Light Ivory. So you can see that the new cream shade by Hourglass is very similar sort of tone to the Estee Lauder in 1N0. It's definitely more of a sort of summery shade for me, um, whereas these other ones are a wee bit more sort of wintry colours. So in terms of primers with this product, you definitely need to wear a primer with this foundation. I find that it doesn't hold up well enough over the day, especially if some oils come through um, because it's quite silicon based. As silicon is its top ingredient. So I'd recommend grabbing a silicon based primer. Don't use a water based one or an oil based primer that will not work with this foundation. So I'm going to go in with the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. This is my absolute favourite silicon based primer and obviously it's very compatible because it's from the same brand. And then in terms of application with this product, um, over the years I've tried you know with a sponge and a brush and I think at least at the moment when I sort of got back into this product and tried the new shade I really love a brush in particular this kind of kabuki sort of style brush. This one is the Thin Lizzy brush guys. It's amazing but you can only buy it with a Thin Lizzy foundation and the shade that I got given because it was for PR was way too dark so unfortunately you can't actually buy this brush but there are heaps like that out there so any sort of dense kabuki style brush will be fine. So what I quite like to do is apply this product kind of all around my face in the shade cream. So I go in with a few swipes like that and then just buff it in. And when you've got that silicon based primer on the bottom as well it really helps the foundation just kind of effortlessly blend out. It's really great. 
So you can see that's a really, really, really good color for me in terms of like just matching my face. Like it's not very highlighting or anything. It's just a good, a good match. And then what I like to do is go in with the shade Blanc and pop a little bit of this sort of on the high points of my face. And I am just going to build up a little bit of the cream shade on some blemishes as well. Because I'm not going to use concealer today because this product really is a foundation and a concealer in one. Um, for the concealer work, I find blending in with your fingers works really well. It kind of reminds me of the NARS Soft Matte complete concealer and texture when you use it as like a concealer. I haven't actually tried blending this in with my hands as a foundation. I just felt like that would be way too much effort and it would take way too long. The brush does such a good job. So then I'm just going to blend in the Blanc shade. The nice thing is this product doesn't set very fast either. It just kind of stays malleable for quite a bit of time. I am going to go in with another stick foundation to contour. This is the Lancome Tint Adol Ultra 24 Hour in 010 Beige Porcelain. It's just a little bit deeper than my skin tone. This is a, creates a very, very natural shadow. I do find if you don't want it to transfer, you need to add a bit of powder. I'm just going to go in with this Milani Prep Set and Glow Illuminating Transparent Powder and just a big fluffy brush. This one's by Eco Tools. And I'm just going to pop a little bit onto the areas that I do find I get a lot of transfer, which is around my chin because I tend to put my hand on it and I have my violin chin rest sits here. So, and I've got a lot of playing to do today. So I'm going to really load up the powder just on these sort of areas, just so I don't have any transfer throughout the day. I'm also gonna run a bit of that under the eye just to kind of set the product under there because I do find with my fine lines under my eye, it does crease a little bit. So that is what it looks like for the rest of my makeup on. Very simple look today because I'm running out to go and do a recording this morning. I'm already a little bit late to my room booking, but we'll get there. Um, I'm gonna come back and film my actual review after I've done my recording. Busy times, guys. But anyway, this is what it looks like with the rest of my makeup on. It's currently five past nine, so it's just past nine o'clock. So I'll do a check-in in the afternoon and then one in 12 hours time. Okay, so it's quarter past 12, so this has been on for a little over three hours. I'm gonna do a check-in now because I've just popped home for lunch and I need to get back to uni and do some practice. I do have a tiny bit of creasing here in my little <laughs> smile line. Damn forehead lines. I need to wear my hair in like a high pony to give myself a facelift. So yeah, I will check back in with you guys at the end of the night to show you what it looks like after 12 hours. So it's 9 o'clock at night, I just got home from uni, I'm so tired, I really need to eat dinner. You can see I got a quite shiny on my forehead, it did end up breaking down a little bit here in between my eyebrows, but um, just a little bit, like not too bad, but you could tell that anyone with super oily skin would probably really struggle to keep this sort of intact during the day, which is why I think it's better for normal to dry skin because mine's normal it can lean a bit comboy so that doesn't surprise me especially because how warm it was also remember i didn't set this part of my face with powder so that's what it looks like with no powder which is pretty great you can still see my cheek products and everything um it stayed on really well like around my blemishes and such it's worn off a bit around my nose because i do i just get a runny nose and it tends to run there but it certainly doesn't look as good now like it definitely looks like it's sat on my skin a bit but um i think overall it's pretty good for 12 hours wear especially with not much powdering so my overall thoughts on this product as I said earlier, this is definitely one that I think is more suitable for normal to dry skin. I think if you have oily skin, you'd have to use, you cannot not use a primer with this one. And I think it would be very important to powder it heavily. I just feel like it looked cakier on me when I had slightly oilier skin. And I think now it just looks really beautiful. So if you did enjoy this review, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up for me. It does really help me out. If you want to see more reviews from me on the fairest foundations around, then don't forget to subscribe as well. I am making at least three videos a week too, so I'd love to have you around here. Until next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful couple of days and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!